Hey guys, Miss Marusik here, and in this video, we're going to look at calculating the percent composition of compounds. A percent composition is looking at the ratios of one element to another in comparison to the total. But instead of looking at a particle ratio, instead here we're going to be looking at a mass ratio. So the mass of each individual element in comparison to the total molar mass of that substance. Um, so in order to do this we're going to be calculating a percentage and as a reminder a percentage is always part over whole times a hundred to then get the fraction into a percent and so you'll see this formula is no different the percent composition is equal to the mass of each element in our compound over the molar mass of the entire compound so again the part that's the element over the entire total molar mass, the whole thing, times 100. Um, so let's jump into a problem. We're going to talk about these steps as we calculate our problems here. So the first question asks, what is the complete percent composition by mass of potassium carbonate? Your first step that you need to do is, surprise, surprise, you have to write a formula for potassium carbonate. So formula writing has not gone away, folks. Okay, so with that said, potassium is K with a plus one charge because it's in group one. Carbonate, that would be a polyatomic ion of CO3 with a negative two charge. As we can see, those two charges do not balance. So our overall compound will be K2CO3. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the molar mass of this potassium carbonate. I need the total molar mass. However, as I'm doing this, I'm actually going to write down a little extra information than I might normally write. Obviously, molar mass is something you can plug into your calculator very easily. But I need some individual numbers here when I calculate my percentages in just a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and actually show a little bit more work than I might normally show for this. So we have potassium we have carbon and we have oxygen. We have two potassiums, one carbon, three oxygens. Then I'm gonna look at my uh, formula chart here, my periodic table, and get my molar masses for everything. Uh, first off, potassium is over here at 39.10. My carbon is 12.01. And then my oxygens would each be 16. I'm also going to go ahead and get some subtotals for each of these. Again, normally I would just take all this and plug it in my calculator. But you'll see having these subtotals here in just a moment is going to prove to be really handy. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do 2 times 39.10. And that gets 78.20. My 1 times 12.01 will obviously just be 12.01. And then my 3 times 16 is going to be 48. So then I'm going to add all of that together. And I see that, that gets me a total molar mass of 138.21. So I'm going to write that down here. That's in grams per mole. All right, so now I have all of the pieces I need to calculate these percentages. So when I calculate a complete percent composition, what they're wanting us to do is to calculate the percentage of each individual element based off of our mass ratios. So if I'm doing the potassium, what I want to do is I want to put all of the total molar mass that came from potassium, so in this case the 2 times 39.10, so that 78.20, over my overall molar mass, 138.21. So we're again basically looking at a ratio here of how much mass did 
potassium contribute to the overall molar mass. This would get us a fraction. Of course, we want a percentage, so I'm going to take this and multiply it by 100. All right, so I'm going to do my 78.20 over 138.21 times 100. Now, obviously, this is going to get you quite a few digits here, and I don't want to have to report all these digits. The problem is, is that this particular question didn't really have any kind of starting number to it. Um, so when I report these percentages, I'll usually do at least one, if not two places past the decimal. Um, I'm not usually pretty picky on that. Um, I would just at least show one or two places past. So I will go ahead here and write 56.58. And that, again, is going to be a percent. So that means out of the total molar mass, 56.58% of it came from just the potassium. We're now going to do the same thing for the other two elements. So for the percentage of carbon, I would have 12.01 over the 138.21 times 100. So let's plug that in real quick. And we see that comes out to right around 8.69%. And then last but not least here, we're going to do the oxygen. So again, we want to use the 3 times 16, the 48 here, divided by the total molar mass. All right, so let's go ahead and plug that in. And we see that gives us right around 34.73%. All right, so now here's the deal. I think a lot of you can kind of see this. Obviously, if we did these percentages right, we should be getting really, really close, if not on the nose, exactly 100% when we add these up. The total percentage should come out to 100. So I actually like to do that kind of as a double check at the end to make sure I didn't make any math errors. Obviously, if your formula was wrong, that could cause some errors. But um, if I made any math errors anywhere, a lot of times I catch it when I do my total at the end. Now, sometimes it comes out really close. Like, you know, it might come out to 99.99 .99 based on how you rounded some of these. But it should come out really darn close to 100%. And often it will come out on the nose. So you can see here it came out perfectly at 100% for the total. So use that kind of as a double check at the end just to make sure everything went okay. All right, let's do one more together. So let's go ahead and flip to the next page. Now here, I'm going to let y'all come back and try out this lead to chlorate one here in just a moment. I actually want to try out with you this next one that talks about sodium sulfate decahydrate because we have here a hydrated uh, ionic compound and those sometimes trip up students. Uh, they get a little confused on how to calculate the molar masses. So I'm going to just go ahead and talk about how that works. Um, so first I would do just what I did on the last problem. I would first find the formula for sodium sulfate decahydrate. So thinking about my compound here, I have sodium, which is Na. I know that has a positive one charge because it's in group one. A sulfate is SO4 with a negative two charge. I see those do not cancel out. And so I'm going to have Na2SO4. And then I'm going to address that hydrate part. So as a reminder, deca means that I'm going to have 10 of our hydrate, our water, attached to this. Now, basically how these hydrated compounds work is that you have your regular repeating crystal lattice structure for the ions themselves. But there tends to be some empty spaces that exist in that lattice structure. And so what's happened is that the waters have absorbed in from the atmosphere, from the surroundings, and filled in some of those available spaces within the lattice structure. So what's interesting is that these really 
aren't bonded together. They're technically two separate things, but they're kind of temporarily conjoined within our substance. So this dot here does not mean that these are multiplied, but rather that they're just combined together. So when I'm doing my element counts here, I'm going to have sodium, sulfur, I'm going to have oxygens in two different places, and then we're also going to have our hydrogens. So sodiums, I'm going to have two. Sulfur, we're going to have one. Oxygens, we got to be really careful. I have four coming from the Na2SO4, from the sodium sulfate part, but then I have another 10 times one, so that big number, that coefficient in front, We'll multiply that one. Um, so that means I'm actually going to have a grand total here of 14 of those oxygens. Finally, for the hydrogens, this 10 would get multiplied by the 2. So that coefficient and the subscript get multiplied together, and I would have 20 of those. So then again, I'm going to take these and I'm going to multiply them by their molar masses from the periodic table. So looking at my periodic table here, sodium is 22.99. My sulfur is 32.06. I know a lot of us remember this one. Um, our oxygen is 16. We see that one used a lot. And then hydrogen is another one we get see a lot is 1.01. All right, so now I'm going to get some individual totals here for these. So get my calculator here. Um, 2 times the 22.99 would be 45.98. Next, the sulfur, that's going to just be 32.06. 14 times 16 is going to be 224. And then 20 times 1.01 .01 is going to be 20.20. .20. All right, so now I'm going to add all of that together. 45.98 plus 32.06 plus my 224, plus my 20.20, .20, and that gets us 322.24 for my total molar mass. And again, that's in grams per mole. All right, so now we're ready to calculate the percentage of each of those elements. So just like before, I would first start off with the sodium. I'd have 45.98 the total of all the sodiums together over the total molar mass. So again, the part of the element over the total molar mass of all the elements together, and then multiply by 100 to get it into a percentage. And so we get right around 14.27% there. And I'm going to do the same thing for now for my other elements. So for sulfur, 32.06 over 322.24 times 100 to get our fraction into a percent. All right, and that gets us right around 9.95%. Next, I'm going to do my oxygen. So 224 over my 322.24 times 100. And we see that gets around 69.51%. Now, theoretically, for this last one, could you add all these together and subtract from 100? Sure, you could. I like going ahead and calculating it just in case my numbers are off somewhere. That way I can double check it at the end. So I'm going to squeeze this in here. I got 20.20 20 
over my, ooh, squeeze it in, 322.24 times 100 to get into percent. So do make sure on like a quiz or a test or something that you are showing all of this work, even though it's annoying to write out, that's how you're going to earn your full credit there. And just in case you make a boo-boo somewhere, that way we can give you partial credit. Um, so that gets right around 6.27%. So then again, as my double check at the end, I'm going to take all these and see if they add up close to 100. And I see they end up on the nose. Now again, it, when you're adding them up, it should come out to like 99.99 or 100.01 it should be really close um, just what can happen is sometimes as you round these if you have to round something up or down that can just throw you ever so slightly off of that but it should come out really darn close to 100. all right so here's the deal we skipped that example that was up above you notice it had lead to chlorate there so what i want you to do is to take a moment and pause the video and see if you can go try out that example so go ahead pause it try it out all right did you pause it did you try it out? I'm going to guess that you did. So let me go ahead and put my work up here and so you can see how you came out. So first off, the lead to chlorate is PbClO32. So again, formula writing strikes again, super important here. I added up all of my substances in there to get my total molar mass. And then here's what I got for my percentages. Now, you notice here that I only did one place past the decimal, um, but you should still add up really close to 100. But I will warn you, here, while they do add up perfectly to 100, the in showing only one decimal place, uh, you may come out a little bit further off from being 100 on the nose. You know, it might instead of being maybe 100.01, you're getting 100.1. So you might be in the tenths being off. So just kind of keep that in mind. You should still be really darn close to 100, but you get a little more off the less you are uh keeping on your digits. All right, I hope we are feeling good about calculating percent composition. Uh, the reason why this is important is you notice it was all about mass ratios. And in the next video where we look at calculating with mass ratios, you'll see some of these same components of the part that's of the element versus the total mass of that compound. So that idea of part mass versus total mass is going to come in again. All right, if you have any questions or need any help, please feel free to email me. Bye, guys.